Hey YouTube, today we are going to be making homemade beef broth. I just bought and then did a video on how to trim and tie an entire beef tenderloin and I often say nothing goes to waste in my kitchen and this is one of the ways that I make sure I capture every last bit. So this is the scraps. This is everything that's left over after I trimmed it and we're going to be making homemade beef broth. Now you can do this with all kinds of stuff. Um, you can use, um, they have uh, <laughs> soup bones at the grocery and you can get those and use them. Um, you can use um, I've done it with ground beef. It's not great with ground beef, but in an emergency, you know, why not? Um, but this is all the fat and the trimmings and everything left over after I trimmed that roast. And as you're working, if you don't do whole roasts, you don't do great big pieces a lot, um, as you're working with smaller pieces, just save your scraps and your trimmings and throw them in the freezer. And then when you have enough, this is, you can do it then, okay? So this is it, all the extras. And I just threw in a little handful of garlic. Uh, these are small cloves, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 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 ten cloves however much you like. It's a fun thing about doing your own food. You can do it however you like. A little kosher salt, a little black pepper, and I have my oven at 400 degrees. I also realized a minute ago I'm out of carrots. So normally I would throw a carrot or two in here. I've got celery. I have tomatoes, which normally don't go in broth, but I like them for the color that they put in the beef broth. And then one great big onion. Because there is so much fat in, this tr in these trimmings, there's a lot. Um, we're not gonna drizzle this with olive oil, but we are just throwing it in the hot. I think I gave it uh, an extra 10 minutes just because I wanted more color on it. But this is what we look like, right? And when I brought it out of the oven, I set it at a slight angle because this part is almost pure beef fat. And a lot of fat on those trimmings when it went into the oven, it's all drained away. Now, I'm not gonna toss that either. I'm gonna saute potatoes in it because that's fabulous. But I'll collect that and I'll strain it off into its own container. I don't really want it in my beef broth though. I had a couple, maybe four quarts of water in here and I'm just transferring all these veggies right over here into this. And I'm not gonna do a whole lot to this either. When you're making broth, you don't want to use any more water than you need to just cover your ingredients. Broth is, or stock, is where you're extracting flavors <coughs> and protein out of your ingredients. But it also dilutes those as well, right? So you want to walk the balance between a nice full pot and lots of ingredients and just enough water to cover. The more water you put in there, the more your flavor will be diluted. You can always add water. But the only way to get it out is to let it simmer to reduce. You don't want to do that. Oops, okay. So here's our beef fat. Ta-da, beef fat. To this pot. Remember we got our veggies. I'm going to add a couple of nice fat sprigs of fresh thyme and I'm not going to worry about pulling them off. I'm throwing them right in there like they are and we're going to give it a little bit of kosher salt. Not too much because it can get very, very salty very quickly and I don't know exactly how I'm going to use this once I have it ready. So I want to do just the minimum. However, if you don't season as you go, the salt doesn't have time to really blend with the other flavors and it never really tastes well seasoned and you end up salting it too much at the end to get it to taste even kind of right. That's it. Got it on medium heat. I'm gonna bring this up to a simmer. I don't want it to boil hard because the fat that is still here, Ricky, can you see that? Can you see there's still a good bit of fat in here? And a lot more will render out. I don't want to boil it because if you boil it hard, that fat will mix with the water and it will emulsify and you'll get a very cl uh, cloudy and kind of muddy looking broth and we don't want that. So up to a simmer and we walk away. Our pot has been in the simmer for about two hours and you can actually let this go you know, for several hours if you want to. Quite often I've stuck a, a pot of stock or broth on the back of the stove and let it go all afternoon. But it's getting late, kids are getting hungry and cranky and I'm gonna wrap it up. So can you see from here, can you see 
what I want to show is the amount of movement in here. We don't want a hard boil. You do want some movement because here's what happens. The fat and the proteins rise to the top of the pot and I just skim it off just with a spoon, just like that, edge of your spoon. But if it boils hard, that fat and those proteins would the action of the boil will actually emulsify that back into your stock and you don't want that. So this is the stuff that I've skimmed off, right? Don't pour that down your drain. Trust me, that's not a very good idea. And at this point, we're just going to strain it. Now you can simply pour it through a fine mesh strainer like this one. That's fine. I did have all that, uh, the thyme in there though, and I, I want to capture those leaves. I'd like to have a, a slightly more clear broth. So I'm going to ladle it through a few layers of cheesecloth. I've got four layers of cheesecloth here. And this is all you do, just like this. People a lot have been uh, recently been talking about bone broth. <clears throat> that just refers to using meat with the bone on it. And it's like I was saying earlier, you're going to have the, a lot of calcium is going to leach out of there, especially if you put a little tiny splash of vinegar. But it's incredible for protein. And I don't know what kind of health benefits it might have. I know the calcium comes out. I know that... Uh, Collagen is good for your skin and your hair, but I do know that's stuck. I do know it tastes great. So I've been making bone broth for years before it was ever a thing. So I'm very progressive. I'm very ahead of my time that way. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and strain the rest of this off. A couple things. This stuff, if you were in a traditional French kitchen, you would actually add all of this back to your pot cover it with another layer of water and let it go even longer, right? It's called, I think it's called re-wetting, re I'm probably butchering that pronunciation. But anyway, they, that's how you really don't waste anything. And I've done that plenty of times and it works, works well. If you want to at this stage, you can give it a good shot of, of a good heavy red wine. I like to use Merlot, that's one of my favorites. But look here, I'll come back in a minute and show you this again. Look how beautiful that is, how nice and clear. Nice. Okay, show it from the top. That way. Okay. I went ahead and I strained off the rest of the broth, and I did go ahead and top it off with my ingredients. I thought I'd try it. I'd see what happens. You know, may not be anything, but uh, I might get a little more broth out of it. So, you can tell. Can you see the little bit of fat that's left on the top? If you want to, you can go ahead and skim that off, just like I did before while it was over there in the pot. You can do that. Uh, you tend to lose a lot of liquid that way. And this, as it separates, you can see the fat rises to the top. So this is fat. This is broth. And of course, I haven't strained this. But if I stick this in the refrigerator, it's going to solidify. And that's going to get hard, and I will be able to pop it off. Same thing is going to happen here. I'm going to stick this in the refrigerator and this fat that is on the surface is going to solidify and I can simply flip it off. It comes off really, really easily. That's the easiest way to get the fat off. However, there is not enough fat in here really to shake a stick at, so I'm not really going to worry about it too much. I could go ahead and use this as is. And as a test, it's hot. Yeah, it's really good. If you are going to serve this just as a soup or you're going to drink it as broth, it does need more salt. However, I am probably going to be making French onion soup, so I will season it as I go and make sure that the flavors are fully developed. This is some good stuff. All right, so if you have found this useful, do me a favor and hit like and hit subscribe. You can find me on Facebook. I'm on Pinterest. I'm on Twitter. I don't remember the rest of them because my daughter set it up. Uh, anyway. Beef broth, homemade, you can do it, super easy, and this way, we almost did it for free. I wanted to show you something real quick because I realized that this had happened. When I was roasting the um, beef and the veggies before I put it in the oven, I said we we're going to save the beef fat and I poured it in here and stuck it in the cooler. See? Solidifies. And you can also say, see it stays separate. 
and I'm not sure if I can get this out of here like this in one piece, but I want to show you something else because I was talking about the bones rendering and the, the collagen melting and that you got a real gelatinous thing happen when you have some bones in there. Well, this is the little bit of juice that separated just during the roasting process. Wait, I don't want that on my counter. So this is like the first rendition. Oh, there it goes. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Can you see how thick that is? See, I can draw a spoon through it. If you keep going, you have lots and lots of bones and lots of connective tissue when you're making broth, that will literally turn into jello. I make it all the time with chicken and I call it chicken jello because that is where the gelatin has come out. So that's why that part's thicker. Anyway, I realized I could show that part, how easy it is to separate it and what it looks like when you have lots of collagen.